Thank you. I'm Lucas Cleveland, as you said, and I apologize for interrupting, uh, uh, Mayor Cleveland. I know that you did not uh, submit some opening remarks for our interpreter, so I'd ask that the pace of, uh, of your remarks not be too quick so that they can uh, do their proper interpretation. Thank you. I will do my best. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, as introduced, I am Lucas Cleveland, the mayor of Coburg. Uh, for those that are unaware, Coburg is the largest municipality in the county of Northumberland in Ontario. It's an idyllic beachside, heritage-rich community of over 200 years of history. It's truly the hidden gem in southeastern Ontario, located just one hour east of Cobra, uh, sorry, one hour east of Toronto, along the beautiful coast of Lake Ontario. We find ourselves just south of Peterborough on the traditional treaty territory of the Mississauga Anishinaabe. I am here today to share my community's frustrations regarding the issues that are affecting our community that have been left out of Bill C-59. I'm here to get your attention on behalf of my residents. I want to ask individually and as an individual why this bill continues to completely ignore our world-renowned natural gas sector and why we continue to miss opportunities surrounding LNG. You see, I want to ask those questions as a journeyman, someone who spent 10 years in the oil and gas sector working on the rigs you see, I'm one of those people who's lost everything, my career, my home, and my retirement savings due to the decisions of this level of government. So I'd like to ask why Bill C-59 doesn't address the $82 million a day opportunity of the LNG market, but that's not why I'm here today. I mean, I'd like to address why this bill doesn't help small business owners, of which I am one. You see, after returning home from Alberta in eight years, I built a business with my partner, Yet every year it gets harder and harder to even break even. I'm curious why Bill C-59 continues the legacy of not standing with our small business community in this country. But again, that is not germane to why I'm here. No, today I am here to speak for the citizens of Coburg. I'm here because I desperately need this level of government to listen to their concerns, the ones they share with me every single day. I need you to listen because they keep coming to me to fix the problems that only this level of government can actually fix. You see, I'm the first person in Coburg to ever be elected from the public straight to the mayor's office with zero public experience. I did it because I moved to this community just seven years ago. And in the last seven years, as I built this business, I've watched our community drift into total chaos. I mean, I was happy just running my business but our community is completely under siege, and so I needed to try and do something. So here I stand 18 months later as a first time mayor, proud of the drastic and immediate changes that we've made in Coburg and at the county level. I am proud of the work and attention our local community and county is getting both provincially and internationally for the work we're doing. But I need to get this level of government's attention because when I hear from my constituents, 99.5% of the issues they complain about day in and day out, their fears, their concerns, the, the things they want fixed, and they're asking me to fix, it's up to this level of government to address them. I mean, when is this government going to seriously look at bail reform? Why isn't this part of our Bill C-59? I mean, how many people need to be assaulted during their lunch breaks in my community in front of their children for just being in our community? How many more women need to feel attacked and threatened? How many times do the Coburg Police Service need to arrest the same person for the same crimes before we actually are going to put them away to stop terrorizing our communities? Why is there nothing in this bill addressing the failed drug strategy that is destroying my community? When will this government listen to the thousands of seniors, women, and families in our communities and those from across this country who tell us that they are afraid to come out of their homes due to the lawlessness, the erratic behavior, and the changing face of poverty and mental illness on our streets? Why isn't Bill C-59 creating more treatment options for our most vulnerable? I mean, let's really talk about it, ladies and gentlemen. Why is there nothing in this bill about doing something for our most vulnerable to improve their lives? Why are we focused on protecting the rights of encampments and yet fail to do anything to address the systemic issues in our continuum of care? 
why is it following to us, the lowest tier of a government agency, to enact bylaws in our community to set standards of care for our most vulnerable? I mean, we would love this bill to start focusing on the delivering the mental health services we desperately need in our community and not more health, sorry, not more dental health. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not cavities that are destroying my community. Why doesn't this bill address any of the three major concerns of our community? Now, I realize that I'm out of time, and I want to say thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak. I'm here to advocate for our most vulnerable in our community, who need all levels of government to work together. But most importantly, I'm here to speak on behalf of the silent majority in our community. The people who are tired of watching beautiful towns like Coburg fall into chaos and disrepair. People who are tired of having the vocal minority in our communities influence the decisions of this government. Thank you. You're going to have to... Thank you. I appreciate it, and I hope I've got your attention. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to address this group of decision makers. It has been an honor and a pleasure, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you. There will be a lot of opportunity for questions, and uh, now we're going to... Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, this is a great, uh, great panel. And uh, I, we've had a bunch of great uh, panels, Mr. Chair, but this may have maybe the best of them so far. Um, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll start with, uh, with the, the mayor of Cleveland from the uh, agree, the great, uh, the great town of Coburg. Um, I just want to, of course, we've, we've heard testimony over the last year and a half, two years uh, in, uh, in this finance committee about the challenges uh, from housing uh, to, to opioid abuse. Um, to food bank usage being at over two million in Canadians, uh, and I've seen it myself just being out in the community. If the folks who uh, would ordinarily describe themselves as middle class are using the food banks, um, and uh, you already talked a little bit about that in your opening, uh, and was wondering if you might be uh, willing to expand a little bit more on that. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for the question, Mr. Lawrence. I, I, I understand why you're asking it. I'm sure the phone calls constantly to your constituency office are getting a little tiresome. Um, so I, I appreciate the opportunity to speak to this whole uh, this group. Uh, yes, there's definitely an affordability crisis, and it's very much being felt in Coburg. Uh, I speak from personal experience as a single father, as the mayor of a town of Coburg, as a part owner in a grocery store. Uh, I can't live in Coburg without a roommate, let alone afford a, l afford a house in our community. Um, I mean, where do you want to talk about affordability? Do you want to talk about infrastructure affordability and the downloading of infrastructure from this level of government to lower municipalities? I, I have a peer that was given to Coburg in 2004 uh, with a $400,000 check. At present, we're sitting at a four, forty to $60 million renovation for our peer on 20,000 residents. Yet this level of government found the money to put a brand new Coast Guard station on the end of that pier and it's about to fall into the water. So where do you want to talk about affordability? Uh, the constituents of Coburg are using food banks. We are constantly being inundated by requests for more funding from a municipality of $30 million to fund our food banks because our middle class can't afford it. So I, I, I mean, I'm, I, I appreciate the question, uh, Mr. Lawrence. I guess I'm curious as to what part of our affordability crisis are you interested in? Maybe we'll just uh, we'll start off with housing there. Uh, in, in, could you could you elaborate uh, what the average cost of uh, if you know uh, a house and what perhaps the vacancy rate is in uh, for rental in, in Coburg there. For sure. So um, as a business owner, we one of our biggest problems is retaining uh, staff because there are no available rentals within our community. A one-bedroom uh, apartment in Coburg currently rents for about $1,950. Um, that's a one-bedroom. In two bedrooms, you're at $2,500 plus. Uh, at present, our community has to uh, bring in between five and eight school buses worth of workers because we have such a booming industrial complex within our community. We have zero square feet of industrial space. Uh, our entire downtown is um, full of businesses like it hasn't been in 45 years, yet we don't have anywhere for workers to live in our community. Um, I notice in Bill C-59 that there are a lot of initiatives being put forth. I, I, we know at the county level as a social, as a service provider that the 
way we work with the different levels of government matters. And, and I have a variety of recommendations that I will submit to this committee afterwards regarding how we can implement some of these changes in a more meaningful way that will help those service providers. But, Mr. Lawrence, the reality is, is when the mayor of the community he lives in, who owns a business, can't afford to live in that community, that's just the tip of an iceberg that clearly is a problem that we need to start addressing. Addressing. You, you, also, uh, you also mentioned that you're the owner of a grocery store. Perhaps you could talk a little bit about the, the prices of food. And I also know uh, that, you are, that you are also donate on a regular basis, I believe, uh, some of the food uh, to the more vulnerable as well, personally. And uh, thank you for that. And maybe you could comment a little bit on the prices of food. Uh, but by all means, thank you for the opportunity. Um, yeah, so uh, we are in the grocery business. We are a fresh food producer. We're actually the first of its kind zero waste producer. So we have an eco-conscious business because we realized eight years ago that this was what was going to happen with the cost of food. Um, so we have a zero waste policy. And in that business, we are barely able to break even, but we are a small grocer in a downtown market and the way we stay in business is through that zero waste policy. I speak to this because the cost of food in just the last five years from a wholesale perspective has literally tripled. So the cost to a business owner who's selling food has tripled. That goes across the line for all of the restaurants we supply. That goes for everyone. So yes, we are seeing the cost of food increase at such dramatic rates that the people in Coburg can't even afford the quality of life that they had five years ago. It's a sad story. Um, I think maybe we'll finish up just with that. Of course, the Canada Water Agency was announced, and uh, uh, Coburg Beach is an absolutely beautiful, a treasure. Uh, I think one of the one of the prettiest places in all of Ontario. Uh, but it's but it's but it's in uh, it's in need of uh, of some repair. The pier is, and perhaps you could talk a little bit about that. Well, thank you very much, and I appreciate the final question, Mr. Lawrence. So um, this is a particular interest to me. I'm the regional chair of the Great Lakes St. Lawrence Initiative, um, an agency that is a uh, international agency crossing both our Indigenous uh, allies in Canada as well as the U.S. and Canadian municipalities. In the last year, we've grown from 80 individuals to that of, I believe, 256. Uh, we are unbelievably proud and excited about the creation of the federal uh, water agency and, and, and the funding that is going in that direction. Um, but we need to start looking at our Great Lakes as the resources they are. They are an opportunity to protect our environment, they are an opportunity for economic growth, and they are an opportunity for true environmental stewardship. Um, when the U.S. government is beating us to the punchline in environmental stewardship, I know it's time to actually make changes in our country. And the reality is, is that um, the Coburg Beach is just one of thousands of community along our Great Lake coastlines that need help from this level of government in the form of dedicated infrastructure funding. So thank you. Yep, yep, okay, thank you. Uh, is uh, is uh, in short supply in the community you represent, is that right? Sorry, actually, no, that's not. Um, this, in the last 12 to 14 months, we've seen uh, the community of Coburg grow its housing stock by 5.7%. Uh, we've actually seen the largest growth in Northumberland County of affordable housing in, I believe, the 25 years that it's been recorded in just the last 18 months. Uh, Northumberland County is hitting above its weight. Um, it's why I'm now here at this level of government, uh, because we are doing everything we can do with the budgets we have. Northumberland County has a 2,000 square kilometer radius with only 80,000 residents in it, and those residents are demanding the same quality of services of our neighbors to Peterborough and, and in, in Ottawa, and yet we don't have the tax base. A little unclear about your jurisdiction. You're the mayor of Coburg? Yes, sir. So that's your jurisdiction. And at yeah. the, as the mayor of Coburg, I'm elevated to the level of Northumberland County. I see. Northumberland County is made up of seven uh, mayors of surrounding I see. towns. Serving a regional that's correct. jurisdiction, yeah. So in Coburg itself, do you say there's a, there's a plentiful supply of affordable housing? Uh, well, is there ever really enough affordable housing, sir? No. no. Well, I'm, I'm asking you, though. It's, it's no, sir. We are always in need of affordable housing. And would you say that red tape or bureaucracy in your municipality is the main barrier to building affordable housing? Uh, no, sir, I would not, not say. Um, actually, I would say that the main barrier to building affordable housing is the interrelationship between the different levels of government. Uh, I would say that there is too many um, empire buildings and not enough collaboration between these different levels of government. Um, when you look at, I mean, as a local council with very little political experience, I humbly suggest that We've done a lot of great work in Coburg by focusing on our lane 
and only on our lane and avoiding the work that belongs to the upper level of county. Um, when I see this level of government getting involved in housing, much needed, I, I kind of ask myself, who thinks that adding government to industry is going to fix a problem? Well, lots of people do. Maybe you don't, but lots of people do. Um, I mean, it may not be the experience. I come from Vancouver, a far, far different cry than Cobra, because I'll tell you, there's a lot of lack of affordable housing in Vancouver, and we do need federal support there. But I'll turn my, uh, my uh, attention now to the uh, Psychotherapy Association.